an amplifier from a Pi black box um, transistor version. Uh, the black box is pretty beat up, so I've got rid of that. But I've kept the um, the amplifier section. It's held on by a load of little self-tapping screws. So just uh, take the uh, case. It's just bent aluminium. Inside you've got the components on the circuit board and uh, the two power transistors which go after the speaker output. Uh, these are all germanium transistors and also selenium rectifier. Uh, germanium, they can, after some years, maybe go a bit noisy. And these, um, you have to check that they haven't failed. They're new market ones, apparently they're pretty reliable. Uh, heat makes them run away and fail, so you've got a fuse on them just in case the current goes too high. Uh, selenium rectifiers, they can fail, but I don't know if they have a reputation of failing, but uh, I find that these can still work fine. They do drop a bit of voltage. You can put um, a modern silicon rectifier in its place if you want. Uh, the controls on off switch, volume and the tone control as stiff as anything they just need a bit of lubrication uh, these old uh, electrolytics be important to check that they're any good measure the ESR uh, especially the one that feeds out to the, uh, the speakers and these they're pretty cheap the circuit board is nice and easy to get to it's just um, held on by uh, one screw and then it just uh, you can just lay it down and it's pretty straightforward can, I'll draw out the circuit I'll just check the components over pretty small mains transformer um, I don't know what the wattage was supposed to be but uh, it doesn't look like it would be particularly loud but um, we'll find out and um, then I'm going to connect it up to a speaker and um, of course it needs a ceramic uh, cartridge, a high output cartridge to run it. I haven't got a lot of gain for a modern cartridge so I'll have to use something like that. A little voltage selector, it actually you can run on a 110 volts. Um, it says 112 I think. A 90... Uh, 190, what's that say there? 19210 no, not 110. <laughs> I was reading that wrong. That's 19210. We don't have voltage that low really anymore. Uh, it's a very unusual range. 212, 230, 230, 250. Well, you run it at 230, 250 these days. There's uh, auxiliary output for um, goes off to the turntable and the mains. I need to take that off before I plug it in. Um, there's no fuse on the uh, on the mains input side, so I guess they didn't think that transformer was gonna pack up at any time. I rely on the fuse on the plug, which uh, as long as you've got uh, these days, the fuse in the plug, as long as it's not like well, it only need to be about three amps for this. Anyway, um, I'll check it out. This uh, component checks and um, see how we get on. Just checking out the Pi black box transistor amp. All the components uh, look pretty good, so I decided to ramp up the voltage on it to uh, just check it out initially, see how the voltages pan out. So uh, I've got about uh, 235 volts, drawing very little current. I've got a speaker connected eight ohms, but you don't need a speaker connected because it's capacitor coupled anyway. It's not like a valve amp. Um, so, on the rectifier, we've got uh, 20, just over 24 volts, negative of course, and the midpoint on the um, Darlington output, which should be half, is about minus 13. Oh yeah, I've drawn out the circuit diagram, it took a bit of a while. Uh, it's quite a sophisticated for its time. But um, just looking at the output at the moment, um, you've got the two power transistors and the center points connected through a big capacitor to the speaker. So um, as the signal goes up and down, you charge and discharge this capacitor to 
transfer the signal to the speaker. When you're almost at full volume, uh, when the signal goes towards the negative rail, 24 volts, you uh, this um, transistor starts to cut off because it's got no voltage available. So uh, there's some feedback via this capacitor here to actually um, push the negative voltage higher than minus uh, rail and it helps to keep this one conducting and stop the distortion. Anyway, the voltages, as I said, is at about 20, minus 24, which it should be, I think. Uh, this is a selenium rectifier, full, full wave off the uh, input uh, transformer. There's a little independent uh, winding there, almost like a valve heater winding, which I see up, uh, for the lamp. I uh, don't have a lamp, it blown. So, uh, 5.8 AC. So, um, they put a lamp on there now. Uh, the earth runs all the way along. Uh, all these germanium transistors, these are NKT, um, I forget which one they are, NKT452s. And you've got some uh, driver ones here. Now back here, this this is all DC coupled from this point here. This is all DC balanced. That's why you need to get the middle of the rail here, which is 20, it should be about 12, it's 13. And you can adjust that down here. There's a potentiometer where you can adjust the voltage on this one, which adjusts this point here and it's carried through here. And... Um, but I didn't have to adjust it. On the board, it's um, down down the bottom there. That black one. Just see it. Uh, board's pretty well cramped with components. These are all the little germanium transistors, a germanium diode, and these are the uh, power uh, transistors screwed to this plate, as is the selenium rectifier. Um, Germaniums have a low voltage a drop, better than silicon, so um, any heat generated below is only going to happen about full power. There's a one amp fuse there just in case anything blows. Uh, selenium rectifier is testing okay. A lot of people would change that to a silicon one, but it's a nice little thing, looks alright. Now these capacitors, this is the big smoothing capacitor which is on the circuit diagram here, 1000 microfarads, 25 volts. Um, the bigger the better, and the lower the ESR, internal resistance, the better. Uh, of course, these are very old now, 1025 volts, so it's actually working at its voltage rating. Uh, I think I'll change that, because um, the bigger and the lower ESR, the better, and the same on the output. Now this capacitor down here, this big green one, is actually the output capacitor of the speaker. Now any ESR in that will drop power. Um, and also, the bigger, that's only a thousand microfads, and in those days it's probably the biggest they can get. Now I can get one that size, that's near 4,700 microfads, and it would earn a low ESR, so I'm going to change that. Because those two are critical to give you some performance. Uh, that one there, the bigger the better, and the lower ESR the better on those two. Um, down here is negative minus 11, so that one there. Uh, just feed in uh, just the preamp. Now at the front you've got um phono connection here. Comes in, weirdly there's a double gang volume control. I don't know why they've done double gang. Uh, because a single gang here I thought would have been enough. But they've got uh, this one on the front, which just varies the um, resistance to the phono as it goes up and down. It's a 220k there, and then it comes into this uh, amplifier, basic transistor amplifier circuit, with some feedback, uh, some uh, treble, treble cut. It's uh, They've obviously worked that out what it needs, because it's got um, a bypass capacitor, as well as one there and the resistor will give you um, some uh, cut there 
to get the right sound obviously from the pickup so uh, it just feeds through to the volume control here uh, which is standard volume control but it has got um, tone control just a treble cut through a little uh, pot so I didn't measure the value but it's, it's probably about 200k the tone control is on the on off switch uh, there's the mains coming in. This is the tone control, which is the treble cut. The volume control is this double, double pot here. Um, back to the circuit. So um, the volume. So therefore, it goes through this one microfarad capacitor, and then you've got this uh, more gain here with the DC balancing, and then you've got. Uh, this uh, even more gain here and you've got some feedback uh, just round here to this point across uh, 150 ohms uh, they must have arranged that uh, feedback there to give you the correct uh, sound there's a bit of a um, treble cut again to do with the feedback there uh, diode is standard and there's um, all these resistors here just balance the uh, current and the output uh, on the output there's one ohm in the emitters uh, just to save the transistors from running away They're just so they will lose some power if you've got one ohm there and this um, the speaker actually didn't measure the speaker say it's a four ohm speaker so it's going to drop power through the one ohms anyway um i'm going to test it for uh frequency response before i change the capacitors and then change the capacitors and see how much better it gets uh, i've got a signal generator connected to the phono input i've got the load up there i've got it on eight at the moment and um, I can put the scope on it as well. Um, anyway, uh, I'll do that and add that on. Just check in the waveform uh, how much you can get out of this before it distorts. Um, on the scope, red is the input signal and the yellow is measured on the speaker. Um, and as you can see, the frequency is only uh, 30 hertz at the moment, and um, it's uh, given 4 volts across 8 ohm load. Uh, and then if, if I increase the gain any more, you'll see um, it's beginning to have the strange distortion back it off do this about there uh, and there's no distortion um, the voltage has dropped from minus 24 to uh, 21.6 at this load and um, checking the temperature the the silicon the selenium rectifier is the only thing that's heating up. It's got to about 26, 27 degrees. The um, tri output transistors. I'll put the light on. The output transistors are. Um, oh, I'll put the Fahrenheit centigrade. Are only about 23, 24 degrees. Uh, the capacitor. It's beginning to heat up a bit. Uh, it's about 26 degrees. Smoothing capacitor is um, fine, but the capacitor that feeds the speaker is beginning to heat up. Um, now, increasing the frequency up to, say, um, 100 hertz, the uh, output begins to drop. I think that's because the, um, the circuit is arranged so that it boosts the base frequencies because uh, off of the, um, the ceramic cartridge, I think, and the record deck, uh, you get a lot more treble than base. 
and so it boosts the bass and cuts the treble. Uh, 100 hertz, if I change it to... Now, um, oops, it's the right way. Changing it. It's gone into phase now, but the um, the output is down to only uh, I've gone up to 1.8, 1.9, and um, the reason is I'm monitoring the signal uh, at this point here, just off that uh, pot. So this signal. Uh, as I put higher frequencies in, it's been, the high frequencies are being cut anyway. And so the volume is going down. So at um, about 1 kilohertz, it's cut the volume. Well, the output power, the RMS power, the signal's gone down to about half of what it was at um, 50 hertz. And then if I increase the signal up to... Um, up to... Uh, 10 kilohertz signal has dropped again and the dropped to about one volt now. So it was it was say four volts at 35 hertz, um, two volts at um, uh, one kilohertz, and it's only one volt across the load at 10 kilohertz. So. Um, it's interesting to see now if I just uh, this is at 10 kilohertz just, uh, change the now the yellow signal is the um, speaker output if I increase the signal if I keep it's a signal there, it's rounding off the tops, back it off a bit, and um, the actual output power 4.6 volts. So the voltage has dropped about 20 volts. So you can, it will output the same power, or even a little more power at high frequencies than at the base. If you put the signal in, um, I've just checked the temperature. The rectifier is running about 29 degrees, the transistors at 25, and the, this is the light, the um, capacitors run about 26 degrees. Um, so uh, we could probably get a little more power out of the at the base if um, I, mean, I may put a better capacitor, smoothing capacitor in possibly, and also especially change the to a decent capacitor uh, that feeds the speaker, which is that one there. Anyway, it's working okay. Um, it's interesting to see the signal. Um, if we cut it to oops, one kilohertz, uh, because it boosts the signal as it goes down, I'll back off the signal so it just doesn't distort. Let's just back it off about there. Yeah, it's just it gives an over about the same over four volts. Um, now the tone control, it's got uh, well the tone cut, it's a bit noisy, but as I turn the tone cut, it reduces the treble, turn it this way, so that's maximum signal, that's the tone control there. When it's at the top, it has the least effect, and if you bring it down to earth, it cuts the higher frequencies. Um, Okay, what I'm going to do is change the two capacitors and do an, an, another reading. I've changed the two capacitors, the um, 
mains uh, the DC filtering one which was a thousand I put in a 6800 so uh, see how far technology's advanced since when this was made to now it's uh, 6800 from a thousand and then it's a smaller and higher voltage 35 volts I've changed the output um, one to the speaker to that one which is also um, I think that's a 10,000 microfarad about uh, 25 volts uh, which is 10 times what it was on the speaker there and there and looking at the waveforms it's made um, a dramatic improvement uh, I've got um, 35 Hertz and the um, waveform is looking really good uh, that is nearly 15 volts peak to peak it's showing 5 volts RMS I've got an 8 ohm load up there and I've drawn a graph here which shows you um, the RMS volts against power so 5 volts 8 ohms is just over 3 watts so it's not a fantastically powerful amp but it gives 3 watts and um, changing the frequency uh, to sorry that's um, that's now th uh, 350 hertz three and a half kilohertz and uh, let's put it up um, not that one now these two waveforms by the way one is the input to the capacitor and one is the output to the on the output side of the capacitor just there uh, just to see if the capacitor has um, got any losses or uh, having a problem with fascia for the speaker or anything but it's not um, now of course uh, as I explained earlier the treble response goes down the frequency so uh, we can turn the the volume up till we get um, clipping again which is just there just see the top it's not quite symmetrical but we could adjust the pot to get that dead symmetrical just losing the top and the bottom just coming in just back it off to a sine wave again it's about about 15 volts peak to peak and it's um five just over five volts rms so it can deliver the um power across the range without any distortion at all so um changing those two capacitors work fine it shows the rest of the circuits working great now I can increase the power a bit. I could change the selenium rectifier, which has quite a bit of voltage drop, to a modern silicon one. Uh, got to just watch the voltage. That that probably put the voltage up by a couple of volts. Now these are 35 volts. It's no problem now. Uh, some of the components, the transistor, uh, the output ones can take 32 volts. There's one there that's only rated at 12 volts. Uh, the AC127 so you've got to be uh, careful that I don't go over the others are 30 volts so they can all take it uh, capacitor ratings there's nothing uh, there's one at 25 volts there smoothing one but I'm sure that that's only at 11 at the moment um, if I need any more power, I, I don't know. This, the, the rectifier is quite nice. Uh, I don't know. This is only a low power. I'm going to compare this one. This is the black box transistor, which replaced the black box valve amp. Um, I'm going to got a valve one I'm going to do next, and then we can put them side by side and just see um, what the differences are. But um, I'm really pleased now with this one. It's uh, got a nice waveform, no distortion, and... Um, as I said, the power output's about uh, that's into eight ohms. Uh, it's there, just over three watts. Um, I'm going to try it into four ohms, and that's when the amps draw will go up and see what um, 
what sort of draw we can get into 8 ohms so let's just turn the power back the voltage down a minute and switch it to um, 4 ohms I oh, switched it to 4 ohms sorry up there so um, let's see what we can do into 4 ohms oh, by the way I've got a monitor on the um, DC 23 volts at the moment just put the um, let's increase the uh, volume control the peak to peak is only now is less before it distorts so I'll need 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 volts the, eight, the, the rails dropped to 19, minus 19 now and but it's giving 4 volts across 4 ohms so looking at the chart here uh, 4 volts 4 ohms so it's gone up to 4 watts now so we've got about 1 more watt out of it by changing the speaker load to 4 ohms um, but it's hammering the uh, the DC rail uh, and that, let's see if the um, selenium is getting hot yeah it's about 30, 33, 34 degrees C now uh, and the transistors we're about run about 26. There won't be any heating on that capacitor around the, at the back now. We'll find the light. And it's, a, it's 21 off. That's on 26. Selenium. Well, they're not overheating. I mean, but um, the power is obviously limited by the um, DC rail. So I'll probably leave it as it is for now and, and uh, connect up a speaker, but try and put some music through it. Uh, remember this is for um, a ceramic, old ceramic cartridge which has a very high output, maybe one or 200 millivolts. But if I couple up a modern DC, uh, a modern CD player or something, uh, just to see what it sounds like. But obviously it's because of the um, tone bass boost, treble cut, it's going to sound a bit bassy. Anyway, I'll couple that up and uh, see what, have a go at that. I'm just adjusting the, the potentiometer down there. You have to uh, undo the board and lay it back a bit. And be careful you don't short anything out. I put a bit of paper behind it. And um, adjusting the signal so that uh, as you turn the volume up, uh, the signal before was just clipping at the top. Now I've um, adjusted the pot so it's clipping equally top and bottom now. And uh, so it's now giving a little more voltage than it was before, before clipping. But uh, it's 4.4 now. At, um, and that's at 65 hertz. So um, that was just. Uh, adjusting that pot down there. Um, I can't really uh, do it while I'm holding the camera, but anyway, it does show the frequency uh, that be a maximum power for distortion. So we've now got two volts per division now. It's about two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, it's about thirteen volts, which is a bit more than before. I can check it at the other frequencies as well. Um, that's six. Oops, uh, that's it. Where's it gone? Uh, what? Six and a half kilohertz. Take it up to say ten kilohertz, and increase the increase the volume. Uh, to the clips <coughs> about the same just clipping about the same point now 
and uh, it's just over uh, f four volts. So ten kilohertz. It's just slightly less power than we had at uh, down at about thirty-five hertz. So that's good. After adjusting the signal uh, potentiometer, checking the line voltages at twenty with no signal, it's twenty-four point eight and twelve minus twelve point five at the center point, uh, just there. Um, so it uh, shows that setting that center point is exactly halfway uh, between the voltage rail is the optimum point with no signal distortion. Uh, just turn the signal up. Yeah, the signal's now distorted equally. So the circuit's working properly. And it's a good 4.4 volts RMS across the 4 ohms. So it's a good 4 watts. Um, the voltage rail has dropped to uh, just under 20 and the midpoint just under 10. So um, if we could uh, keep the rail up we'd get a bit more power but um, it, it's uh, that's how I'm going to test it next with the um, audio. I put the um, amp back together in its case. Uh, just doing a sound test. I connected up um, a, a big 12-inch speaker underneath. Not hi-fi, but it's a good speaker. Um, just mono, driven from this old CD player. Put a track on with a lot of bass, and. Um, I'll just turn it up briefly because any longer and uh, they won't allow it on the YouTube. I've got the volume on max and, and I can turn it up on the on here. So though that's only um, a few watts, it's very loud. Um, and then uh, I can show the uh, the watts uh, connected to the um, dummy load. I put the um, box back on, uh, connected up speaker to the speaker terminal. Got an old CD uh, player. Uh, it's only mono, so I just put one channel into the phono socket down there. Uh, connected up the speaker to the load and um, I can see the RMS average and um, I've got a display of the waveform of course when there's music playing uh, of course it's not like a sine wave but if you look at um, this uh, curve here this um, waveform here the voltage uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 about 14 volts peak to peak which when I did the test was the um, like the maximum output so this this actual record's got a lot of bass on it, so that's why I selected it. Um, I've got it on eight ohms. Uh, I, I've got a speaker where I can actually turn up the sound if necessary, just to see what's going on. But I'll turn it down. Um, uh, as you can see, it's varying about. It's got it goes up to about three RMS max when it hits the uh, bass chip parts, and on the graph. Uh, that's into 8 ohms, not a lot, it's, about, it's only over about um, 1 watt. If you turn it up to, uh, well, if you put it down to 4 ohms, it's still drawing about, uh, it's, it, it's, um, it's only about 2.5 volts, but with 4 um with uh, four ohms, uh, it's just a slightly bit, bit more power. So um, all depends on if it can drive the load. So um, it's all working. I, I did put it into a big speaker and it sounded uh, oh fine. So I'm going to uh, renovate the uh, the valve version. This is which went before this. This before they turned it into the transistor one. This valve one with the two big transformers, um, four valves, 
very heavy and then that was replaced by this transistor one which is much lighter so after I've renovated this and um, got it working it would be interested to see if the power output how it compares to this because this can only give about 5 watts um, max uh, flat out so um, that's uh, all good and then uh, I'll um, I'll do the other one as a separate uh, video and then combine, um, you can do a combination at the end.